Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some Knit Picks Cadena with some leftover liquid RIT dyes that I used for another dyeing video. Cadena is a bulky weight yarn that is 70% Peruvian Highland wool, 30% super fine alpaca. It is soft, not quite as soft as I thought it should be for having the alpaca content, but it has a really nice twist and I'm excited to dye it. This dye pan was used to dye some Easter egg dye tablets. So it is not, it's still a little warm. There is a huge, huge water volume here. Um, as you can see, I forget the total, but there's well over, I'd say 30 cups of water. There were many cups of vinegar, but it's not that acidic because the dye tablets do release some basic compounds. This yarn was dry and it's currently just floating on the surface of this warm bath. All right, the dye bath is still cool, which I'm glad about because I have this leftover RIT dye here and I'm just going to start adding it into the dye bath. I have no idea since it's only warm, not hot. Oh, maybe that was the navy. I have no idea how sort of quickly or slowly it might bind, but I'm just sort of cleaning out my cup and adding the dye to the pan at the same time. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I've got a brush. Oh, here I think we've got some more of that purpley color. And I'm just gonna clean it off in the dye bath and collect some water in here and sort of pour. Ooh. I do a lot of like purpley colorways, but this truly is just sort of what I had left over today. And so you can see that there's a lot of color in the pan, um, but we do have some sections of color that aren't, you know, that are a little more blue and some that are a little more purple. Just adding on some more liquid. This is fun. All right. And now I'm going to turn on the heat. Uh, my dedicated dye pan, and everything I'm using here is dedicated dye equipment today. But my dedicated dye pan is on top of two burners on my gas stove. And now we're just going to heat this up to let these colors bind to the yarn. I could have just mixed the cups in the dye pan first and then started heating it up, but I like the thought of maybe adding on getting something fairly semi-solid, but maybe having some darker patches. And we'll just see <laughs> sort of how this ends up going and looking and whether we want to go back into the dye cups and add more. But the three colors in this mixture were navy blue, purple, and uh, charcoal gray. And so I'm just sort of excited to see where this will go. So now that we're heating up, I will come back in about 10 minutes and check on it. The colors are all blending together into this sort of deep purple. Um, pretty reminiscent of uh, dark purple or deep purple from Dharma Acid dyes. And I have to say, I don't mind at all. I do want to just sort of move it by these, um, this tie is pretty loose, but I wanted to just move that tie a little bit. I don't want to move the whole thing because I like the, the sort of kettle moment we're getting, but yeah, I love this. I absolutely love this. All right, you just keep doing your thing. Leftover random writ dyes. Um, you can see we're not quite bubbling yet, but we're definitely steaming. So I'm now going to, uh, I guess, just let this continue to heat up slowly and I'll be back in about 20 minutes. So if you look towards the back corner, you can tell that the color is now starting to exhaust. This is a perfect, great Kool-Aid type color. It's a beautiful, rich, deep plum, eggplant type purple. Um, but I'm now 
There's still some color in there, but I'm going to turn the heat off. And I'm going to let this cool slowly and just sort of see what happens. But I am so excited! It's been about an hour of cooling. And to me, it looks like this water is almost completely clear. Maybe there's a hint of color in there, but check it out. This yarn feels glazed even. This is beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside so it can cool completely. This yarn is not super washed, and so we don't want anything to felt, but once it's cool, then we'll go wash it. Let's wash this beautiful, beautiful, deep, purpley yarn. I absolutely, absolutely love the way this color came out and the way that this yarn absorbed the color. All right, I am seeing a little bit of bleeding, but that is consistent with the, with the water that was left in the, in the pan. There was a little bit of color left in there. Um, let's see if there's as much on the second rinse, but I'm expecting that this will rinse clearish pretty quickly. This is not a super wash yarn, so I want to be a little gentle. I'm going to add a tiny amount of some clear dish soap. Sometimes that helps. Some, sometimes you get more bleeding when you add the soap. Um, but I am going to keep gently rinsing this until the water runs clear. Then I will hang up the yarn to dry. Oh, Kadena, I am so sorry that I was underwhelmed by you. There's really nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly soft yarn base. It was just when I saw that there was that alpaca content, my mind went to, ooh, this is going to be like the most soft, luxurious thing in the world. And while it's still a soft, beautiful yarn, it didn't have that oomph that alpaca frequently gives me and the desire to just rub it on my face. Um, I would love, you know, a scarf or cowl or hat knit out of this. Um, so it's not something like wrong with the base. But digressions aside, this color is beautiful. I am honestly really, really amazed that we created this color with these Rit liquid dyes. Um, like the, the color feels glazed, the color penetration is really, really small. So if we take a section here and we untwist it and you see the plies, you can see that uneven application of color around it. And that shallow application is something that is just usually fairly unique with hand dyed yarns. This glazed effect is something that is just so beautiful and desirable and I know it, it gives the yarn just a great dimension, and I just love the way that this tonal yarn turned out. A lot of people don't love Rit Liquid dyes, and I think that as long as you don't use too much of them, you can get these really beautiful colorways. It's just always important to not, like where I've run into trouble with them is when I used way too much dye, and so then I had to spend a huge amount of time rinsing it out but you can get almost all of the color in the yarn if you just don't overload it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the No Dye Left Behind playlist, where I take leftover dye from the videos I was filming, throw them together, and create a lot of times some really magical, stunning, one-of-a-kind colorways. Make sure that you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every week. I also have multiple live streams every month and you really don't want to miss any of it because I think it's all a lot of fun. If you love the yarns that I dye and want to bring one home, you can! The Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop is filled with over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos. And I'm constantly updating it with new yarn and you should really go check it out. Thank you so, so much for watching.